Oh, hey, it was good. It was good, brother. How's everything? Happy New Year's, man. Happy New Year to you. Merry Christmas, you know. All that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had a problem going live. I don't know why, but it was it just kept timing out, but we good now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How are things going? How are things? Life, life is good, man. I can't complain, man. I'm ready to talk about this topic about inner child, man. It's something that you hear a lot yeah. where people don't really, like, one, get it. If you haven't experienced any trauma, or not even trauma, but if you just haven't experienced like the inner child, um, like work, right? You know, unfortunately, some of us have experienced um, trauma as a kid, mm -hmm. and then you know that that affects us once we grow up. Tony, how's everything, man? Happy New Year! I'm good. Happy New Year to you guys. Good, 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 good. Um, actually, before we even get into to the to, to the main topic, everybody introduce yourself. Go ahead. I Tony, you want to go first? Go <laughs> I, I can't. Uh, Tony, say it again. You want me to go first? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, I'm Tony Thompson. Um, I, I live in live in the UK, and um, I work on the buses, but I'm also a, a budding author. So, yeah, that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Yeah, hello everyone. My name is uh, Katrell. Um, in the Caribbean, specifically Cayman, um, and I uh, and I am a therapist. <laughs> you know, and I'm happy to be on this wonderful live with you guys. You know, good way to start a new year. Yes, yes, yes. And guys, if you don't know, I'm Herbie Mac, um, suicide prevention speaker, also a coach as well. Uh, this is something that I want to talk about when it, when it comes to mental health um, is the, the inner child. Um, so something some of us had got trauma or experienced trauma as a young age. Mm. And when we grow up, you know, when we're so young, I bring it, we can't process it. But when we get older, you'll start lashing out or like you may not have confidence. For me, I'm just going to talk from my experience. I didn't have confidence growing up. Um, mm. My inner child, nobody really, really told me I could be the president or anything like that. So with that, it was just something that um, I had to learn, you know, as an adult. I started reacting and then obviously um, had suicidal ideations, attempt, a functional alcoholic. And then once I started journaling, I started realizing that most of the trauma that I personally experienced came from my childhood. Mm -hmm. And I had to do the inner child work, you know, as far as... Um, as far as like talking to myself, I have a picture of my, myself in my office as a kid. And I talk to that kid every day, tell him he's love, he's smart. Um, and do the inner child work as well, right? Like, you know, yes, I do journaling, but I also do coloring, uh, play basketball when I can, and try to do things to, to prove to myself like I am worthy. And it helps out so much. Mm -hmm. So, Patrol, if you want to touch on it, please do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... And I think it's interesting because I feel like we all uh, we all do have our inner child. We still we still connect on, right? We won't say it outwardly, but we still connect to our inner child. And even even if it's like recalling memories of oh, when I was a child and this and that, it really helps you to 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 reflect on uh, where you have been, um, especially when it comes to trauma and where you have progressed. You know, it also indicates like, you know, whether there is any progression. Um, and sometimes, you know, you mentioned the trauma in the inner child. Sometimes like the, the like we are unable to deal with the trauma and that inner child tends to just display itself like on a daily basis. And then sometimes we see that immaturity coming. So I feel like we need to have a balance between uh that inner child, you know, accessing it when we need to. Um, you mentioned even talking to yourself, like coloring, writing, you know, I feel like we can have a balance with that, you know, over a period of time. Yes. What about you, Tony? How do you feel about inner child? Yeah, um, I didn't start becoming aware of the inner child until, to be honest, until I started talking to you, Herbie, and, and, and you, Cottrell. And basically, even though I realized that there was something within me, um, like, I suppose, juvenile, that would react to certain situations and people in a certain way. And 
Uh, for example, when uh, I, I'm told something or um, someone's quite uh, cross with me or angry with me, I tend to react in a certain way. And I realize that I, I'm reacting in a certain way, particularly like I'm very oversensitive and um, I realized that that oversensitivity has come from when I was about like, you know, about 14 where I took a lot of things personal. And so I tend to react to certain things um, in a, from a 14 year old perspective. If I'm, I don't know if I'm making sense, but um so that inner child in me has still hasn't grown up, and um, I don't know if we should expect that inner child to grow up. Because, but I need to interact with that inner child to say to that inner child, "Well, there's no need to take that so personal." So I don't know if I'm making sense, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Um, and, and uh, Mark mentioned, um, you know, that the lack of confidence, um, and I can I can attest to that because I know for me, my inner child, part of it was having that lack of confidence or self esteem at some point, right? And I had to identify that and realize that you know this inner child part of me needs to mature. Um, because it will benefit me uh, in a certain way, it will benefit me in the long run. Um, and if I keep that inner child part as where, you know, I lack that self-esteem due to whatever happened to me when I was younger, then, you know, how will, how will I grow? You know, what, what, what part of me, what part of that confidence will impact me in the future when it comes to, like, jobs, you know, relationships, friendships, like... It, it will have a, 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 a impact on you if, you know, certain areas, as I said, of your inner child um, are matured. At the same time, I believe, for example, that that inner child that you have tend to come out sometimes when you're around friends or, you know, <laughs> when you're playing games, like just just some of those aspects. Um, but in terms of, you know, even trauma, it can be, well, it can be heavy. You know, yeah, can be yeah. Quite yeah, you know, um, for me, right, like, not even just the trauma side, right, yeah. and the child doesn't have to be something that was like car accident or death yeah. or something like that, so my, my, um, one of the inner child experience that I had, personally, um, you know, like reading, right, we had to read out loud in school, and I stumbled upon the word, like, hip hippopotamus or whatever, right, and a lot of my classmates, like, picked on me for, like, for, for years on that, right, and that affect me and my confidence of reading out loud. Now that I fast forward, I have a daughter, right? And that inner child of me, when I'm trying to sit there and read her book, was like struggling, right? It was like the, the it was like that 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 circle that kept playing. And I had to really sit down and talk to my inner child and tell myself, like, it's okay, relax, breathe. You are not that person that you was in uh, grade school, you know. So don't beat yourself up. We all stumble upon our words every now and then. And that helped me build up the confidence to read out loud to my daughter, to read out loud to my son. And it, it was something that took it took work, right? It, it took work to, to get comfortable talking out loud and, and not talking, but reading out loud to them without having that scene replay in my mind again. Mm -hmm. And and it, it took me probably, I don't know, probably like four or five months to really get used to it. It's something that I had to address. And I just kept slowly working on it, slowly working on it, slowly working on it. So, so that's that's something that um I went to chime in, and then how I worked on it was just like apologizing to myself, right, and just telling myself it's okay, we all mess up, it's fine, don't be too hard on yourself. So, is I I, I suppose in one part in. I, in healing the inner child, especially if the inner child has been wounded, is to, I suppose, reassure that inner child and to, um, I suppose, you have to speak to that child from a, an adult perspective. Are you 
Is that yeah? That, that's what, right? yeah, 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 yeah. So, the, so what I did um in the beginning, I, I journal. Right, journaling is is very therapeutic for me. So I journal, and then I realized that like the scene, what happened, and then I wrote a letter to that kid, and I read it out loud to him, so he can understand. Like it's fine, it's okay. It's something like that. That's simple. That that made life so much easier, right? It, especially yeah. writing a letter to your to your child. Hood self, you understand as a as an adult, you know your brain is is you know you you're you're adult now, so you understand like okay, it's not that bad. Like we stumble, and I just had to apologize to myself, and the inner child and me cried. You know, I'm not, I can gladly say it on the live, and it's something that helped me heal. You know, now I read these books out loud to my daughter at will with no problem. Yeah, yeah, um, I suppose because. The most traumatic time for me was when I was 14 um, because that's when I left the residential home, the, um, the children's home. So uh, there, a, a lot happened emotionally um, to me, mentally, emotionally, and even like uh, physically in terms of adjusting to a new environment and and to the way and adjusting to a new family in, in the sense, because I, you know, I was predominantly brought up by white people, white folks. And then I had to adjust to um, living with a, a black family, an Afro-Caribbean family. And, but um, the trauma of leaving a safe environment or what I perceived as a safe environment, um, uh, the children's home, and then having to adjust completely um, to this new environment. It was all very emotional for me. And uh, even my stepfather, even though we, we didn't have a good relationship, he, he, he got concerned because every night when I would go to sleep, I would rock myself to sleep. I would put my, you know, hands over my ears my arms like that and I would just rock myself to sleep and it got to the point where he would um he you know he, he thought that something was really drastically wrong with me I it took me quite a few years to get out of rocking myself to sleep and um I so how would I sort of talk to that 14 year old boy in terms of um, reassuring, because I, I realise that a lot of my emotional disposition now, if that's the right word, um, relates a lot back to when I left the children's home. So I don't know how you guys would, um, how would you tackle that? How would you? Control, you uh, want to touch on this? <laughs> Yeah. If not, no, I can chime in if you want. But I, 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 want I, I want to give you a chance to talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for sure. I, I think one of the things is definitely accepting that it happened, right? It, it doesn't make sense to to dwell on, on this and keep ruminating on it, right? I think one of the things is to accept it, you know, that the past happened, right? This happened to me when, uh, when I was a, a child or when I was a teen, right? And then you identify that you accept it. Now it's like, what can I do to uh, to move forward? What can I do to to overcome uh, um, this this inner child that you know used to rock and you know the feeling of abandonment, right? And I think it's definitely to to do with um, or one of the things um, to do is after the acceptance is definitely just you know as uh, Mark said, you know you know, journaling, you know, uh, acceptance, you know, deep breathing. Because when you reflect on it, it might, it might stir up some, some uneasy feeling, right? Right. Or even reflecting, um, and because one of the things you've did, you've done there is, is you've notified that all right, this has happened to me, right? When I was a child, right? Or a teen, I should say, right? That when I was 14, right? Now I'm an older person, all right? You know, I want to move forward, right? I want to be okay with myself knowing that this inner child has been put to the side, right? And I want to mature in that area because you even uh, mentioned like the emotional disposition, right? 
right? So even that regulating the emotion, the emotional aspect of it um, in certain situations, you know? So as you said, if you could identify a certain situation where you remember it, it kind of triggered that inner childhood uh, feeling and you reacted similarly to how you reacted when you were 14, right? Mm-hmm. Then in that moment, you'll be like, ah, right? And then you just stop and pause. And then that's when you're like, you know, logic over emotions, basically. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Logic mm-hmm. over emotions. Like, can, it, it, is it appropriate for me to, to act like this? What can I do when, when this situation come up again and I react to it? How do I react positively um, to this? What can I do to react positively to this? You know? And even challenging your thoughts. You know, I feel like we are afraid of challenging our thoughts. Right? And I think one of the yeah. things is definitely challenging your inner child. You know, sometimes it fights us, um, but we need to 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 challenge it, not fight it, yeah. not argue with it, but just put a challenge to it. You know, which can help us to to push past that that stage that or that that, for example, situation that may come up and how we react to it on an emotional. Yeah. Basis. I don't know what why that made sense. Oh yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Um, I, 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 sp- I suppose there's another question. Is I suppose there's there's certain stages in your childhood, like um, that, um, trigger certain things. I, I presume. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, like there's a there's a picture of me when I was about four or five with my foster mother it's a black and white picture and it's basically it's, it's a r- really sad picture i don't um look very, because i i was i was meant to be adopted by my grandmother in jamaica but it didn't work out so my um foster mother took all these pictures because she was obviously feeling very emotional and sad and when I look at that picture, it just triggers a lot of um, sadness and emotion. Not not that I was aware of it at that time. And um, it, in in it, in reflection to when Herbie, when you first challenged me about talking to the inner child, and it was a, I think it was about a month ago. You said, yeah. you know, have you 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 spoken to the inner child? And when you said that to me. I became so emotional. Uh, I just, I couldn't face it. I just, I felt so, because it's normal, man. Emotions just came over, and I just, and and you didn't. Obviously, you didn't continue to probe me because I think I, I think you felt that. I yeah. was finding it really, really difficult, really hard. And that's when I sort of, even though I've heard of the inner child before and heard of the the inner child within the person, within a person, but I, I wasn't aware of what, um, the, who the inner child was and, and what the inner child, um, what, what it meant in terms of, talking to that inner child and I didn't realize it was going to um, manifest so much emotion and so much, uh, <laughs> you know, no, it, it's fine. You know, for, for myself, um, you know, I, I lost, I lost a cousin who I looked up to at a young age, right? Uh, like 11, 12. Uh, my mom and I was like the last ones to see him alive. Right. And unfortunately, like I had to identify his body because my mom wasn't available. So that was like, for me, I thought I was like stepping up being the man in the house, but that was some trauma, right? And then like three years later, I lose a sister to cancer. So it was a lot of like, unfortunately, death in my family. So a lot of my, my, my parents, they, you know, that's trauma, man. They was depressed and they was trying their best. So what I had to do was honestly look at the whole situation. You know, for me, when you're a kid, you don't realize like, you know, adults have feelings too. You just, you know, you pretty much focus on yourself. But I, I started writing and I took a step back and I realized the whole situation. 
and I forgave my parents for that, right? And once I was yeah. able to forgive them, then I was able to channel in and focus on the inner child that needed that love and that affection to build up the self-esteem. Um, you know, I talk about writing so much because when you write, you s start seeing your behaviors, and then you also start seeing your thoughts, and then you start understanding your feelings. So that helped me balance everything out, right? Okay, the reason why I'm behaving, I'm drinking all this Hennessy is because of this trauma. The reason why I'm thinking negative in my thoughts is because of, look, look what I'm doing. I I'm not putting myself in that position to win. I'm putting myself in that position to fail. You know, I'm just using drinking as a coping method. I'm not really chilling in that inner child. And, and as Cottrell said, it's challenging him. At some point, you have to, right? But not beating yourself up at the same time. You know, I, I can sit there and beat my parents up all day, but what is it going to do? Nothing. It's not going to build that relationship. The power of forgiveness is something that I think people need to talk about. But me forgiving them was, was easy for, for me to forgive myself afterwards. Because when you're a kid, you can't control that situation. You're a child. So never beat yourself up for that. And then once I started writing, you know, back to writing, I was able to break things down. Okay, these are the areas I need to work on. These are the areas that I have to improve on. Now, is it going to happen overnight? Hell no. <laughs> but, but it will happen over time if I slowly address it, right? That's why I tell everybody, have, have different tools for coping, right? Like, do, when I look at the inner child, do I want to cry sometimes? Yeah, it's natural. It's natural to sit in that feeling and that emotion. But when it gets too heavy for me, I do this thing that's called release writing. Right, I write all that emotion out. What it probably looks like gibberish. Either I'm going to tear it up afterwards, or I'm going to burn it and just release that emotion. Yeah, yeah. Um, and like, I have a question. Um, when when do you realize that? All right. Uh, I need to. I need to 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 grow out of this inner child, you know. Or what, or for, I mean, any of you, you know, um, you know, just reflecting on a, you know, situation, if you can remember, you know, uh, when that situation occurred, you know, did it, did it trigger you to go back to your inner child and your reaction of how you reacted to the situation? You're like, yo, I have to, I have to, to, to you know, to, to work on this. So like, when 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 did you realize that all right my inner child needs to there needs to be something. addressed yeah yeah oh yeah i i could i could speak upon this real fast um so you guys you know i told you my nickname was like anything possible yeah. so when i started like really drinking and um one day i was just i was acting up man like as far as like my emotions i was like bashing my house mm. and then um you know, my girlfriend during the time, she's like, yo, what is wrong with you? Like, you, you, you know, you're, you're responding like a child. And that was the, the awakening that I needed, you know, because I felt like I was acting like a child. But then when you have somebody that's on the outside that knows you very well, that says, hey, you're, you're acting like a child. I had to sit down and really like look in that man in the mirror, like Michael Jackson, and just ask him what's wrong. And then I started realizing the trauma that, I started realizing it was trauma. You know, I think, I think as kids, we don't process um, some events. And then I realized it was trauma. And I just was like, okay, I have to adjust this now. And this is after I left the uh, mental facility, right? Like I was literally struggling with, of, of who I am. The behavior was like acting childish. The only thing I wanted to do was sit down and play video games and eat pizza all day and, um, and drink. And but the drinking was leading to me punching holes in my walls, leading to me like banging things. And I was just like, what is wrong with me? And then once she said that like statement of like, you're acting like a child. And I had to really just do some soul searching and like, why, why am I acting like a child? And then it revealed from the trauma. Mm -hmm. uh, do, do you find that um, you also, your inner child will project um, cer certain reactions to certain things like um, for an example um, when I first got married um, my inner child had a lot of hatred towards women and um, it was that because, because I was rejected by the most important woman in your life which is your mother 
and I found that I was projecting a lot of that hatred towards my wife when, particularly in the first year, and she said that it was. She said she said sometimes she would look into my eyes and she could just see such hatred. Um, but I wasn't hating her. But it it. It, it was, was just the experience from from the woman that you love the most, your mom. Yeah, and yeah. Um, and because being rejected by your mother, you know, you you I was rejecting my wife psychologically and emotionally. It was it was it was a real paradoxical um, experience. It was just my, um, my wife said sometimes she just couldn't be in the same room as me because she she said it was just really um, hard to. Um, hard, it was hard for her to like perceive and and, uh, and and experience, I suppose, in a way, you know. So, is yeah. So the question is, we, I, I suppose, a, a lot of the things that we've experienced as a child, we tend to project, project to to project. Is is that is that the case? You know. To me, every, everybody's different. Um, so, so my my projecting was um, my projecting. I, I didn't necessarily had projecting of like you know hate. I just had um, just some issues that I just had to like deal with. Um, but if control, if you wanted to touch in, you you could definitely touch in. Um, but yeah, for me, I, I I didn't really have like too much hate. Right, like it was just one of the things about like the boundaries, right? Like my my parents and I didn't have the best relationship, and I was cool with that. So it was just something that I was just like, "Yo, it is what it is." I'm not gonna hate him for it. It just is what it is, because I don't I don't have the energy <laughs> to just hold on to hate. You know what I mean? It's draining. Like it, it is. I just leave it where it's at. And if it was meant to be, it's meant to be. Now, like we fast forward years later, this is the best relationship I have with my parents because I address them. Right, I had to sit down and look at them in the face and say, "Because of you, I attempted suicide multiple times," and that led to something else. Um, but yeah, I didn't really necessarily have that. What about Control? Would you like to chime in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think a lot of the time, uh, when it comes to <clears throat> when it even comes to um, like the trauma of being a child, you know, I think a lot of the time self blame comes in right we blame ourselves for for um <clears throat> for what happened to us and as you mentioned like a lot of it was out of our control when we were younger right and then we grew up just continuously blaming ourselves and be like yo this is my fault and and this and that but you have to connect with that inner child and just be like it wasn't your fault you know thinking back about it thinking back about it you know yeah. You know, what aspect of it was your fault? You know, what could you have control when you were a child? What you couldn't have control when you were a child, right? Yeah. And I think a lot of times, um, you know, that that's what happened where, where a lot of people, are, we tend to hold on to that, to that inner child aspect and self-blame, 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 and then when we get older and we exhibit in exhibit such behaviors in various <clears throat> in various areas, we're like, yeah, it's my fault why this happened. Yeah, it's my fault. And we just we just blame ourselves and then we then we act out what we experience, you know? We project it. But I think one of the things is accept that it wasn't all to do with you. You know? Um yeah, yeah. and I think that's definitely one of the things uh we 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 miss out on or we don't highlight. Yes, yeah. you know. Can, can I chime in on that? Because it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. when we think of when we think of like the the trauma as a child, mm -hmm. right? Now that we're adults, you sit there and you're like, man, I should have did this. Man, I wish they would have talked to me like that. And it's because you're an adult, so now you know you you know how to <clears throat> con con control your emotions and how to speak up. But as a as a child, you don't know how to speak up. You're still yeah. like trying to figure out life, <laughs> you know. So 
So when I go back to that inner child, that's why I tell you, like, apologize to him. Don't beat yourself up. You, you're a kid. To put all that pressure on a 14-year-old kid is something that, that you shouldn't do. You know, at 14, you're just probably just really trying to understand who you are, let alone, like, you know, the whole high school thing. So don't beat yourself up for that situation, right? If you, even though you feel like the world didn't love you or, or this person didn't love you, just make sure that you love yourself first and foremost, right? Go back to that inner child that's 14 and say, no, I love you. F everybody else. <laughs> I love you the most. And, and keep it like that. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, if you don't love yourself, how can you love someone else? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, true. That's, yeah, yeah. That's true. Because yeah, um, I, I, I try not to center everything on, on myself, but um, because um, I have such a lot of questions in regards to the inner child. Um, so... so Hopefully, Herbie and Cottrell, you can help me on this. The biggest thing that I fear and I don't, I I don't like, and I I, I really um, find really hard to handle is rejection, and I mm -hmm. and um, that I suppose that rejection is synonymous with also. Um, taking things so personal because I think, oh, that person doesn't like me. That person doesn't. Um, and and I, f I found that that rejection came from, what, and, and, I, and I know this is very deep, but apparently the re rejection, a baby can feel rejection in the womb if the mother does not want the child that um, the, the baby can actually feel that rejection. And I know that's maybe a controversial thing to say, but it, it's just, um, but a lot of research, I suppose, has come up that babies do feel that rejection. And then when I've had conversations with my uh, biological mother, she has said that there was, she was she was only a teenager when she was pregnant with me and she said that she didn't really want the baby because it was you know it was a, a lot. quick fling yeah yeah it was a quick fling in uh, in <laughs> in in jamaica and she said that it was just um really hard for her to handle and even that, and so receiving I, I, that. Wait, wait, Tony. I have a question. Did you forgive your mom? I'm, I'm in the process of forgiving, and I no, need to no. forgive her. Yeah, yeah. I'm, you should be thankful she told you the truth. To be honest, right? Yeah. But see, like when it comes to rejection, I look at it as just redirection, directing us in the right way that we need to go. I'd never look at it as I'd never look at it as something like, oh damn, I got rejected. Okay, you lost out. Now I'm on the path that I need to go. You know what I mean? Um, so honestly, I know it's going to take time, but forgive your mom. And and she gave you the, the real answer. She didn't sugarcoat it. It could have been easy sugarcoating it, and you would have been like, oh yeah, sure, fine. But forgive her. Yeah. Once you forgive her, I guarantee you probably be able to forgive yourself like no problem, with no problem. Yeah. I like, suppose you know, one acts on the other, you know, forgiveness and self-forgiveness, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Forgiveness is key, man. Um, you know, I had a, had a deep conversation with my dad one day about, like, you know, my, my trauma and stuff like that. And for him, you know, like I had a little bit of this, um, you know, because I tried to reach out to him during my crisis. And, you know, I had a little bit bit of this because he was like the last person I spoke to. And we had a a sit down and I had to understand where he was coming from. And once I was able to understand where he was coming from, then I was able to, okay, cool. Now I can focus on the inner child because I got the answer that not that I need it, not that I want it, but I need it. You know, like I needed to understand what was the, the, um, the disconnect. And once I got that, that disconnect helped me connect with that inner child. Now I don't sit there and, and abuse my inner child. There is a time to play. There is a time to just chill out. 
as Joel said. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, yeah. I see. Yeah. It's <laughs> it's a it's a, it's a deep process, isn't it? Yeah, bro. We all the healing is, is a journey, right? Like it's it's a it's a marathon. It's not a race. So don't sit there and compare yourself to, hey, this person healed within six months. I'm going to be able to do it. Everybody heals in their own timeline. I can't hear you. Sorry, we can't hear you. Yeah, I think you made your mic. There you go. <laughs> yeah. um, everybody have their, their, uh, their, their own pace of healing. Um, everybody has their, their own journey. And I think once you make up your mind, right to to access that aspect of forgiveness as, um, access that aspect of, of healing right once you make up your mind it, it's going to be so much easier to accomplish right because you have for example you have you know for example me just for an example would probably say yo i want to heal okay <clears throat> what do i want to heal what do i want to heal from um what am I going to do to uh, achieve that? You know, um, sometimes, uh, sometimes some some people might feel like, oh, the healing is just uh, just me doing this and doing that. It, it's just taking in that entire your entire world, right? And just looking at it, your inner child, your adulthood right now, um, and just be like, okay. Do I wanna? What do I want to hear? These thoughts, these feelings, right? These actions, right? Whatever impacted me as a, as a, uh, when I was a child, I want to heal that aspect. You know, that it doesn't make sense to say you're gonna do it and don't do it, and then you fall. And mind you, mind you, laps will occur where you on the journey. You're like, this hard, boy, and you just go back in your ways. But it's always important to to note that, you know, it's not gonna be perfect. It's not gonna be all roses. You know. You gonna have a lot of bumps to 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 healing, um, and that's why, um, I believe like just taking in certain things, doing certain things can can help with that. identifying certain things, you know, acknowledging, even even having support. Some of your friends, you know, yeah, them, like, Yo, I, I try and take the you. words right out of my mouth. Yeah, you know, that's important, um, right? Um, you know, have them, uh, call you when you're falling off, you know, because then you'd be like, yeah, 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 you know, like. So I think like those aspects are important for that as well. Yeah. Also, like for, for me, I would, I broke it down, right? Like I learned by patterns. Mm -hmm. So I just did, I did it in blocks, like small little blocks. Okay, I'm gonna work on this. And once I work on this, like the, the trauma was the, the getting over the, you know, suicidal ideation and realizing the trigger was my parents. So I worked on my parents first, dealing with that. Then I worked on like, okay, I dealt with that. I healed from that. I forgave him. Now let me forgive myself for damaging my body, trying to harm myself. Then I went to the next level. Let me work on the inner child, right? Because I was a child when all this happened. Doesn't mean that was my fault. It's just something that, unfortunately, I was on that path. But being able to, to, to realize like it's not my fault, but forgiving myself for being so hard on my inner child. And then I was able to just slowly just, you know, have tools. So when I do feel like, oh, damn, I'm beating myself up again, calling myself out. But then I, I, it's something that you said. I changed my circle, right? Not because my friends was bad or anything like that, but I needed a stronger support system where I could sit there and be vulnerable without being judged. That's one of the hardest things to find is having a group. That's going to sit there. You can sit there and say, man, look, man, I was up from four in the morning, crying my heart out, looking at this picture of this inner child and not them questioning you, crying like a little girl for, you know, like having the right people on your team. It's something that, that, that is perfectly something that I recommend, but it is hard to find, you know, is that, that inner trust. And I suppose it is, like you said, it's having that support network. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love social media now because now you get to meet people I, because you get to meet people who have similar views or similar thoughts. You know, not everybody's going to agree upon everything, but you can find the, the right people through social media, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever. So, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And um, do you find that there are certain triggers as well that, um, with your inner child? Yeah. Yeah. But I know my triggers. Yeah. From from journaling, I identify my triggers, right? So when I start seeing my my myself going into those old patterns, oh, okay. Let me use this coping mechanism to break it up, right? That's why, like, I believe of 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 knowing your your triggers. There's some days when I'm, you know, obviously I'm human. I, there's some days when I don't feel like myself, right? So I might just, okay, I don't feel like working out, or it's raining outside, I can't do that. Okay, I'm gonna get my big kid on, get a bowl of cereal, and watch some cartoons. <laughs> right let me reward myself or whatever but but like yeah. but the, the trigger of, of n i'm trying to give you an example of a trigger because it's been a while um since i have i have one thankfully um but like if, if there's something that that's um, alarming me right like i'll tell my wife like hey this is what's going on right this is this is what's up and so i need a moment to address this before i start acting up and she gives me my moment to go, you know, do what I have to do to, to, to cope with it and identify it, whether it's me taking a 45 minute shower with the music on blast, but doing something to address it so it won't pile up and then I can't control it anymore. Yeah. Control, yeah. you have anything? Yeah, yeah. And I, I think it's um, how, how you highlighted, you know, the communicating with your wife. You know, and expressing to her, hey, look, I feel this kind of way, and this and that, and you dealt with it yourself, right? Because um, there are many cases when that happens now and then, we take it out on the person that is there to support us, right? And I think that's where uh, a lot of us missed that, that aspect, right? That, that we projected onto others. However, we got to deal with that ourselves. Right, and once we're able to identify and look like, yo, this has nothing to do with this person, this has nothing to do with that person, right? Is it, is your trauma? It's not for you to put it on them, you know. It's for you to 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 handle it yourself. They are support, right? They're there to help you, you know. They're there to to point certain things out, right? You know, they are there to not to 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 fix you all, right? But to support you to an extent. That will help fix it, right? Um, and as you said, like, you know, identifying that inner child, knowing the triggers for that inner child will definitely um, help that aspect and communicating with the the others you support, with the individuals you support will definitely help a lot there. Yeah. No trauma definitely over here, okay? <laughs> 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 I always tell my wife that. So, yeah, the power of communication, man, you, you need that. You know, as you said, we all have demons, right? Don't sit yeah. there and, and address them on others. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely, I, I definitely think that is also important. Not to when you're healing, not to try, try and strive for protection, um, perfection. Right? What is that? P perfection. What is that? Oh, it's right. only progress, man. Practice <laughs> make progress. I tell people right. that. Right. Because right. when you go for perfection, you can go insane trying right. to trying yeah. to be the perfect. Right. That's what happened to me. Right, because you're trying to perfect the like the healing process. Like, yo, I want the, this to be perfect. I want this, and then you add more pressure on yourself. You <laughs> you probably do the wrong things. You probably overdo things, right? You ain't. We as humans will never be perfect. You know, we'll always we'll always be flawed, right? So I think it's important for us to to know what we're going for and know what we're healing. Know that in a child that we're that we're you know connecting with. Right, and be able to to just know that, yeah, all right, this is what I want to work on, and I know it won't be perfect, but I know that, and I'm confident in myself that I'm I'm able to like heal it, right? I'm able to be like, yo, it's okay, as you said, it's okay, you know, it's okay, it's it's okay to have experienced that, right? But now let's let's go forward, you know. Yeah. So, what would you say? That, uh, I know that. Um, like you both said that, that there are the, the processes in healing and everybody heals in a different time and in a di different way, but there must be some sort of like, are there basic steps to healing in terms like, like you mentioned Herbie about journaling, um, having a support network, 
Um, I mean, I'm, I, like, I'm, I'm grateful to my wife because she's been a, a real rock in the last few years in terms of supporting me and and she will point me into certain directions. Sometimes she'll ask me some very difficult questions, but I, I realise it's for my own good and it's not, you know, to try and catch me out, you know, because, you know, she, deep down she really loves me. Um, but what for, for people that are watching us... Um, like, what, what are some of the steps? What, so, sorry? Is that what are some of the steps for, like, healing? Like, the beginning steps? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that 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 hurting in a child, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, for me, I'm gonna put this out there. Go go see a pro, like a therapist, a counselor, a psychiatrist, and then also, um, you know, for me, I do journaling. I also do um, I, I I do journaling. I do coloring. I also do uh, positive affirmations. Talking to myself in the mirror, and then I'll. I'll not only journaling, but I write a letter to my to the child, like I told you, to to forgive yeah. him, to forgive, put, forgive myself, my adult self for putting my that much pressure on a kid. You know what I mean? Once you you know once you have kids, you realize like, oh okay, they're just trying to figure out. So why would I put that much pressure on a kid? Um, and then really just like forgiving, man. Like the forgiving forgiving people. It's not about like, oh, just, you know, to make them feel good, but forgiving them so you can heal and accepting, like what you said earlier, just accepting it. That is probably one of the, the hardest things for us humans to sit there and accept our past. You know, we want answers or we want to stand up, you know, want to go like in a DeLorean and go back to the to the past and, and like stand up for that kid. And we can't do that. So just accept it. Because if it wasn't for that trauma, you would not be the person that you are today. Right. That that's what that's what I learned from it. I learned from that and and kept pushing. You know what? Let me tell my story. Let me sit there and tell people that I've been a, uh, a you know multiple time suicide survivor. Not because I want to sit here and glow and and no, there's probably somebody out there that's at that level of thinking about it. Where I can assist. Hey, yo, this life better than that. You know. So that that's what I have to say on that. Yeah. I, 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 and I think one of the key things that you you keep you, that you 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 are, you are reiterating is forgiveness. Mm -hmm. and, um, forgiveness seems to be a, a a real key component to what what both of you are saying. You know, <laughs> yeah, because f forgiveness isn't easy. Um, no, you know, it takes a, a, a lot of uh, uproot and an acceptance to. To, to forgive especially when it's you know a lot um but in the end it does help you to to progress move forward be the person you want to be and you know just <laughs> be good friends with that inner child you know and that's what i uh yeah. and, and that's why I, um <clears throat> i think forgiveness is is definitely important oh yeah all day but unfortunately, guys, we got to get ready to wrap this up. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I want, are there any last statements that anyone wants to say? Um, yeah. Um, I want to say definitely, you know, Happy New Year to everybody out there. Um, and Happy New Year to you guys and Merry Christmas, you know, yeah. <laughs> as well. <laughs> um, and, you know, I want this year to be a year of success and prosperity, po uh, positivity. Um, I know there's, you know, COVID happening around and it's out there, but progression can be made. Um, yeah. Also, in terms of what we discussed today, um, the inner child. You know, don't be afraid to connect with the inner child. We might be afraid to, but don't be afraid to. Forgiveness is key and definitely moving forward. Love it. Yeah. Tony, you have anything? Yeah, well, that's what I, to re, re, to write what uh, Cotrells just said that uh, forgiveness. Mm. What I got from both of you guys is is forgiveness and talking to the inner child and um, 
just yeah yeah I, I, i've i've you give me a lot of <laughs> food for, for thought you know good yeah. good good i'm glad this live helped i'm glad this yeah. live um happened first and yeah. foremost and this is a topic that i think people need to to understand you know i for me i'm going to wrap this up um mm. for me uh personally you know you look at that inner child and you want to stand up for that inner child don't beat don't beat that inner child up yeah don't sit there and adjust it this is perfectly fine um you know your trauma does not define who you are i want yeah. you to remember that and healing is it's a journey actually it's a marathon so you know, it's not something that you're going to be healed by tomorrow and you'll be perfectly fine. No, it takes time. It may take you years. Hell, I'm still healing now. <laughs> I'm still comfortable sharing my story, but I just want to show it to people that it is a process. So don't beat yourself up. Happy New Year's to everyone. And don't forget, it's something that that Control said. Don't practice make progress, not per perfection. We don't want to be perfect. We just want to make progress day by day. So then, guys, we'll see you next time. Peace. Yeah, thank you. Peace. Next time. Yeah. Peace. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you.